Secrets According to Humphrey, Chapter 2. More and more secrets. The Nile? Aldo looked up the map when he came into room 26 to clean that night. You must be studying Egypt. Yes, 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 I squeaked. Can you tell us more about it? Aldo didn't answer. Instead, he went right to work, sweeping the floor the way he does every night during the school week. After a while, he said, Pyramids. That's on our word list, I shouted. Pharaohs, he added. Mummies. King Tut. That's right, I agreed. Tell me more. Aldo stopped sweeping and leaned on his broom. I wonder if I'll ever get to see the Nile River, he said with a faraway look in his eyes. So the Nile was a river. I finally learned something about Egypt. Boing, 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 log twanged. Frogs like watery things more than hamsters, I guess. I'd like to teach students about Egypt someday, he said. I scrambled up to the highest point in the tree branch in my cage. You will, I squeaked. Humphrey, now that I'm getting closer to finishing school, I can hardly wait until I start teaching, he said. Aldo cleaned at Longfellow School that night. But during the day, he went to school so he could become a teacher like Mrs. Brisbane. Well, maybe not exactly like Mrs. Brisbane. After all, Aldo has a nice big mustache and Mrs. Brisbane doesn't. Still, I think he'd make a good, as good of a teacher as she is. Aldo got out a brown bag and pulled up a chair up t close to my cage in Og's tank. Let's see what Maria packed for me, he said as he opened the bag. Oh, a cheese sandwich, an apple, and... I think maybe this is for you, Humphrey, he said. Aldo pulled a carrot stick out of his bag and pushed it through the bars of my cage. Thanks, Aldo, and thanks to Maria, too, I squeaked. I didn't eat all of the carrot stick right away. I hid some of it in my cheek pouch, which is a handy way for hamsters to store food. I also slipped part of it in my bedding for a lovely midnight snack. Aldo ate part of his sandwich. Then he said, you know, Humphrey, an Og Maria is going to have a baby. I did know that. Yes, that's great, 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 I told him. Boing, 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 Og agreed. Thanks, guys. I'm a little nervous about being a dad. And I have some news. Suddenly, he stopped. What news? Og splashed noisily in his tank. Well, I want to tell you, but I can't, Elda said. It's a secret. Another secret? I was beginning to dislike secrets a lot. I mean, Maria told me not to tell anybody yet, Aldo continued. It's a pretty big secret. Tell us, Aldo, I said. We're your friends. We won't tell anybody. Aldo pushed the uneaten part of his sandwich back into the bag. I know it, silly. Who would you tell? He said. Still, I promised Maria I'd keep it a secret, so I will. I was feeling a little upset with Aldo. After all, if I told a secret to my friends in room 26, all they'd hear would be squeak, squeak, squeak. Still, I guess a secret is a secret, and a promise is a promise. I hopped on my wheel and began to spin. Sorry, Humphrey, Aldo said. I'll tell you as soon as I can. My wheel was spinning like crazy, so I didn't even answer. Boing, 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 Og twanged. He sounded as curious as I felt. Soon, Aldo turned out the lights and left room 26. I kept quiet until I saw his car pull out of the parking lot. What do you think Aldo's secret is, I called to Og, and which student is leaving? Og splashed around and didn't answer. What are the secrets of the Nile, I asked. I knew better than to expect an answer from Og. Then I remembered the film that my classmates had seen earlier in the day. I had a long night ahead of me, so I decided to take a little trip to the library. If I couldn't find out who was leaving our class, maybe I could at least learn some more things about Egypt. As usual, I jiggled the lock that doesn't lock, slid down the leg of my table, and scampered across the floor to the door. I'll tell you everything when I get back, Og, I squeaked just before I scrunched down and slid under the door. From the sound of Og splashing in his tank, I think he was happy too. At night, only the dimmest lights were on in the halls of Longfellow School, and it's unsqueakably quiet. But I knew the way to the library, so I hurried as fast as I could. It's a tight squeeze under the door. Eek! But I made it. There I was in the library with its shelves and shelves of books in its big glowing fish tank. During the day, the fish tank probably isn't eerie at all. 
but at night the water is ghostly blue. There are bright colored fish bobbing in the water and lots of bubbles. And there's a little sunken ship lying at the bottom of the tank. It didn't look like the sunken ship. I was in a boat once and it almost sank. Hi guys, I squeaked to the fish. It's me, Humphrey, from room 26. Hope you don't mind me dropping in. They didn't answer, of course, but their mouths moved. Were they trying to tell me something? I can't imagine what it's like to be a fish and live in the water all the time. Just thinking about it makes me feel all shivery. But I wasn't in the library to see the fish. I was in the library to learn about the secrets of the Nile. I needed to get to the big table, so I scurried over to a series of shelves next to it. The shelves were like steps, and I climbed up, up, up until I reached the top. I remembered from an earlier visit that there was a big, bumpy remote control on the desk with buttons. If I pushed the right buttons, the big screen in the front of the room lit up. Phew, it was still there. As soon as I pushed the top button, the big screen lit up brightly. Yes, yes, yes. The words, the end, came up on the screen and stayed there. No, no, no. I didn't want to see the end until I'd see the beginning and the middle. The remote control had lots of buttons in different colors, with arrows going in every direction. And when I pushed the arrow that pointed this way, the picture started to move backward. It went unsqueakably fast, so I could hardly tell what I was seeing. There were people riding camels and lots of sand in a strip of water that must have been the Nile River. There were some odd-looking buildings, too. Finally, the picture stopped moving. Then I pushed the play button. Secrets of the Nile, a deep voice said. I hunkered down on the desk and watched the amazement. Soon, I'd know the secrets of the Nile, just like my friends did. And oh, what I saw was positively amazing. Egypt is a country in Africa located on the Nile River, the longest river in the whole wide world. It runs through 10 countries, and that's not all. There is a white Nile and a blue Nile. Ancient Egypt was quite a place. Thousands of years ago, the Egyptians built pyramids, which are buildings shaped like huge triangles. In honor of the kings, the kings were called pharaohs. Pharaoh rhymes with arrow. The pyramids held a huge secret. There were treasure, treasures inside, lots and lots of treasure. But there was also mummies, which were bodies all wrapped up from head to toe. Eek! I squeaked when I saw pictures of them. These mummies were not like mothers or fathers or anything I'd seen. That's not all. There was also a strange-looking statue of a very odd creature. It had a body like a huge lion, but the head was like a human. This was a sphinx, which rhymes with inks, pinks, and winks. The voice said that in ancient Greece, they had a legend about the sphinx. The sphinx guarded a city. When a traveler wanted to enter the city, the sphinx asked him a riddle. If the stranger didn't know the answer, then he couldn't come in, or worse. By the time the words, the end, came up again, my tail was twitching, my whiskers were wiggling, my fur was standing up on end. I hit the top button on the remote control, and the screen went black. I scurried down the shelves and slid under the door a little more easily and ran, ran, ran through the halls of Longfellow School. Believe me, I was happy to get back to room 26, where there were no mummies or pyramids and not one single sphinx. Of course, there was a frog waiting here all about my adventure. He greeted me with a boing, boing, boing. I scurried across the room, grabbed the cord of the blinds, and swung myself back up under the table. By the time I got to Og's tank, I was out of breath. Og, I panted. Desert, treasure, sphinx, a riddle, and a mummy is not somebody's mother. My froggy friend splashed loudly, boing, boing, boing. I guess frogs don't like the desert, where it's very dry. I yawned. I'll explain it all tomorrow. I was unsqueakably tired, and the sky was getting light outside, so I hurried over to my cage and was very happy to close the door behind me. I checked to make sure that the lock that doesn't lock was fastened tightly. Then I dived under my soft, warm bedding and fell asleep right away. Humans might think that hamsters don't dream, but they'd be wrong. In my dream that night, I rode a camel with a huge hump across the desert, past the pyramids and right up to a gigantic sphinx. And you know what? It talked to me. Tell me your secrets, the sphinx said in a ghostly voice, 
and I'll tell you mine. But I don't have any secrets, I squeaked to him. Then you cannot pass, the sink said. You will stay here in the desert forever. And then he, or she, or it laughed. It laughed so hard I woke up. Thank goodness. It was almost time for school to start, so I decided it would be better to stay awake than to stay in ancient Egypt with the Sphinx forever. I grabbed my notebook from behind the mirror, began to write down all the secrets I'd learned so far. Humphrey's top secret scribbles. Just thinking about meeting up with a mummy makes me feel funny in my tummy.